Welcome back. This is lesson two of Machine Learning Zoom Camp Session 5. And we will talk about taking a model that we trained in Jupyter Notebook and saving it into a file. And then we will also take this notebook and turn this into a Python script for training our model and for saving this model into a file. So let's go to the notebook. So this is the notebook and uh, it contains the most important code from the previous weeks that is used for preparing the data set. Uh, let's just uh, go through this. So I already put all the imports uh, on the top. So I did a bit of cleaning. Everything for training the model that we need is already here. So then, uh, so this is data preparation, data splitting, all the variables that we have. And then we have these two functions, train and predict. So this is something we wrote in the previous week. So we will just use them. And these are the parameters of the model. So this uh, we're going to train a model with the C equals to one. And we will use uh, five splits uh, for evaluating our model using cross-validation. So, and now let's run this. So this code uses keyfold, fivefold cross-validation to train a model and evaluate it. This is exactly the same thing we did last week. It's just to make sure that our model is performing well. Yeah, so we have the results. Then we can also look at the scores and then we train our final model. So now we make sure that results look okay. So we train our final model and we look at the AUC of this model on the training data. And of course here I should say data frame test terms. Okay. This is nothing new to us. So now we have this model. It still lives in our notebook. So we cannot just take this model and put it in a web service. So remember, what we want to do is we want to take this model, put this in a web service in such a way that, that the marketing service can use our model to score the customers. So we need to be able to use this model. And we cannot do this from Jupyter Notebook. So now we need to save this model in order to be able to load it later. For saving the model, we will use Pickle. This is a built-in um, library for saving Python objects. So let's import it. What we need to do now is we want to take our model and write it to a file. So for that, we need to first create a file where we will write it. So let's call it... Uh, out. Let's create a special variable for storing the name of the output output file, which could be model underscore. So we want to know what is the C we used for training this model. You can just put this in a file name and then bin, yeah, use the C. So this is how the name of our file will look like. And uh, maybe a nicer way of doing this is using this F um, strings. So instead of formatting strings in such a way, we can just directly refer to the C variable here. C is defined somewhere here. Here it is. And we should get the same result. So now we take this output file and we want to create a file with this file name and we want to write. So this open function opens a file and here we specify what we want to do with this file. So for here we say that we want to write to this file and the file is going to be binary. So we are not going to write text there, we are going to write bytes there. So we open a file. So next what we do is we use pickle to save um, our model. So we use the dump function for that. And uh, yeah. so we write model and we write the file f out. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to close the file. And here I saved on the model, but we actually have two things here. We have the, the dict vectorizer as well. And if you look at our predict function, we need to have both, not just the model, because uh, with just the model, we'll not be able to translate a user, a customer into a feature matrix. That's why we need to have both. So what we can do is we can just write a tuple. So we will write to this model underscore C file. We will write two things. We will write the dictionary vectorizer and we will write the model. Yeah, so this is how we write it. So we open the file, we save the model there and we close it. Calling the close method is pretty important because if we don't do this, we cannot be sure if this file has the content and other services can use it. And it's very easy to accidentally forget to close the file. That's why I prefer to use the with statement, which makes sure that the file is closed all the time. So it automatically closes the file. So what we can do is with, with open output file as um, f out, which is equivalent to this line. And then we do things inside this with statement. So we can do, I don't know, do 
stuff. And once we leave this width block, do other stuff. So everything we do here inside the width statement, um, the file is still open. Once we go outside of the width statement, once we're here, then the file is automatically closed. And this is a nice way, an easy way to make sure that no matter what you do, the file is closed at the end. And it's also a bit shorter, so just two lines versus three. And this is how we save the models. And let me show you how we can load them. So for that, let me restart the kernel. So we're pretending we're a different process now. So what we want to do now is we want to import pickle. And you see this is now cell number one. So because it started the Jupyter kernel from scratch, so it doesn't have, uh, so if we write model here, it says, yeah, I don't know what, what you're talking about because we restarted the kernel and it doesn't have access to the variables we used here. So we're starting from uh, clean slate. And what we want to do now is we want to load the model. And it's pretty similar to saving the model, except here, uh, let's call it F in, file input. So here uh, I call it the F out, which means file output. So a file that I created for writing. And here it will be a file for uh, reading. And here, like we need to replace the W with R. So here we read a file. And this is very important if you don't, if you forget accidentally to change it and it leaves uh, as W here as write, then it will overwrite the file. So it will just create a new file with uh, zero bytes. We don't want to have that. So we want to open this file for reading. And instead of dump, we use uh, load. So load reads from the file. So and yeah, so here we have file in and it returns the thing we saved here. So here, this is what we saved and this is what we load and we don't need parentheses here. And yeah, of course it doesn't know what output file is. Let me just create a variable. I'll call it input file. So or model file. And this is what we want to read. Now you see that uh, we have our dictionary vectorizer and we have our logistic regressions. This is what we trained and saved previously. And you can also notice that there are no imports. So I don't import scikit-learn here, but we have to have scikit-learn installed on our computer. So without that, this will not work. So when it will try to load the pickle file, it will complain saying that I don't know what this is. I cannot create these classes. I cannot create this dictionary vectorizer and logistic regression because scikit-learn uh, is not installed on your computer. So we have the dictionary vectorizer, we have the model. So, and we also have this customer. So I prepared this customer. So I think this is a customer uh, from row number one uh, from our um, Data set. I don't know if this customer is actually from train or not, but uh, let's pretend this is a new customer. This is this person who we want to score, who we want to send to our churn service to understand what's the probability, the probability of churning. So let's have this customer in a variable. And now what we want to do is we want to turn this customer into a feature matrix. So for that, we use our dictionary vectorizer transform method and then we put the customer. And the dictionary vectorizer expects a list of dictionaries. So that's why we create a list with just one customer. And this is the output. So let me save this output into X, where we have seen this already many times. And then what we do next is we call model.predictprova for this X. So we have a two dimensional array as usual, and we're interested in this thing here. So let's write uh, it like this. So the row number zero, the column number one. And we're getting the probability that this particular customer is going to churn. And we can see, let's say, if we add more months to the tenure, then yeah, probability becomes smaller. And then uh, with 20, that's probably, yeah, so it decreases. Uh, but since this customer is new, uh, she has been with us only for one month. So, and she's on month to month contract, then uh, yeah, we're not so sure if she'll stay with us or not. So we want to probably give her some promotion. So we now know how to save the model. We know how to load the model, but this is not convenient to do it from a Jupyter notebook every time. So imagine that uh, you want to train a model. You don't want to open Jupyter and execute all the cells. So what you want to do is you just want to have a single Python file, a script that just does that. So let's create such a script, a script that trains a model. For that, what we can do is we can just go to our Jupyter notebook and then download uh, this notebook as a Python file. So click on that. So it saves the file. So now this is on my in my downloads folder. So now let me put it somewhere else. 
So I have a special folder I call ZoomCam that we're going to use this week. And let me open it. So this is, uh, I already have Visual Studio Code here. Of course, you can use any other editor for that. You can use PyCharm or you can use Sublime Text or you can use Vim or you can use Notepad++ or whatever you prefer. I like uh, to use Visual Studio Code, but you don't have to use it. Uh, you can use your favorite editor. So this is the file we just saved. So this is our notebook. And you see for each of the cells, so it um, wrote the content of the cell. This is all the code we have from the notebook. What I want to do now is I want to save this file as train.py. This will be our script for training the model. And let me clean it a bit. So I'll keep the import here. Then here we have our data preparation. Okay, so just uh, keep it like that. Then um, always, uh, let's call it uh, training. Yeah, we have these parameters. So maybe let's put these parameters at the top of the file. So it's easier to change it. And these parameters, we can configure it through command line interface. For example, I will not do it here, but this is usually what happens in practice. So you want to specify these parameters without having to edit the train.py file. So you put parameters uh, at the top of the file. And uh, here we have uh, the actual training or validation. Yeah, I'll call it training. So here we have validation, then training the final model and saving the model. So let me move pickle at the top. All the imports should be uh, at the top. You don't have to do this, but just makes the, uh, the script a bit nicer. And uh, yeah, perhaps output file will also put at the top. So it's easier to change if we need. And we need to use this uh, with statement. So we'll keep only that. And we don't need the code for loading the model. Let's just remove it and I'll put it into a different file I'll call it predict. So let's add a bit of login here. And by login, I simply mean a couple of print statements. So yeah, let me just maybe run this and see what happens. So I'm in this directory here. We have this uh, predict.py file. Oh, sorry, this train.py file, right? So this is the file. And we want to run it. So I use python.train. And yeah, so this is just uh, some warning. You should ignore it because this is the way I installed Python on my computer. But now you see we run it and we are not sure what exactly. Is it doing something? Is it just hanging up or? Yeah, so it finished, but it would be nice to get some idea what exactly the script is doing right now. So for that, we can just add a couple of print statements so like, uh, doing validation with c equals to let's say that I used the f strings here with c equals to c and then uh, yeah maybe a c on fold yeah we don't have number of fold here let's go fold zero fold is uh, a c and then we increment the fold so validation result then, so let's also the print statement saying that we are actually training the final model here and uh, AC, of, uh, AC of the final model is that. Um, and the final print statement is uh, the, the model is saved to this output file. Okay, so let's run it. You see it now, it's telling us what exactly it's doing. Hmm. I think I forgot to use the. Uh, edit F here, so let me stop it and restart it. Yeah, we're getting some idea what exactly it's doing right now. So it just finished evaluating the model on fold two. And we see that the model is saved here. And, uh, we see, yes, this is the model. You can also look at the size of this model. So it's a two and a five uh, kilobytes. So this is our model. And what we want to do now is we want to use it. And for that, we have this predict.py script. It's also from our notebook that, that just loads the model and uses it. It already has this customer. We'll keep the customer here. So let's clean it a bit. And we just want to print. So let's write input. So this is our customer. And 
probability is a uh, prediction. So just that. So let's run it as well. It uh, loaded the model, it turned our customer into a feature matrix, and then uh, we applied the model to this feature matrix and we computed the probability that this customer is going to turn, which is 63%. So this is how we save a model to a pickle file, and this is how we turn Jupyter Notebook into a Python script. And, uh, this is what we did in this lesson, and the next lesson we'll talk about web services.